Hey everybody, how's it going? Thiago here and welcome to the second episode of the podcast. Here I am again back with another episode, number two of the show, and I'm really excited to be here talking to you today all about the CEFR levels. Before we start with today's episode, I just want to say thank you all for the wonderful comments you left under the first video here on YouTube of the podcast. I was amazed to see the amount of positive, supportive, encouraging comments that you guys left there. And I am super glad to know that my story of how I went from beginner all the way to advanced and how I became a fluent English speaker resonated with you all so much. So thank you so much for the wonderful, positive comments. And I want to make a deal with you right now help this channel grow even more and even faster by watching the videos here every week, liking the videos, commenting on the videos with your ideas, your thoughts, your opinions, your stories, all right? This is really good for, for us to create an engaged community here on the podcast and on the channel. And of course, share this channel, share this podcast with your friends and family, people who are interested in learning English or even languages in general, but who might not know about this channel yet. If you help me grow this channel even more, I promise you that I will do my best to bring great content for you guys, great tips, great lessons, great strategies to help you on your English fluency journey. Hopefully, you can get to a higher level of proficiency and fluency in less time, much less time than it took me, for example, because my journey was really long to get to this level I have today. So hopefully, with the videos, the lessons I'll be posting here week after week, these will shorten your journey, all right? And I also want to start by asking you to start by following the show if you are listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. And if you are on YouTube, subscribe and keep following the videos. All right. So let's talk today about the CEFR, the levels. It is really important for you to understand the difference among the levels and how those levels influence your journey. It's also important to have an understanding of that because then you can actually better set goals for your English learning and development. Maybe you don't have to go to the highest level. Maybe there is one level in between that would um, be enough for you and for your goals. So my purpose with today's episode is to give you a general understanding of all the levels on the CEFR. And hopefully by the end of this episode, you will have a better idea of what your current level is and also what level you want to get to. Okay? So let's start this conversation today by talking about what is the CEFR, what the CEFR actually is. So CEFR stands for Common European Framework of Reference for Languages. It is a guideline. It is a set of guidelines. It's an international table that was created by the Council of Europe. And the purpose of the CEFR is to evaluate a person's level of proficiency in a language, not just English, any language. The cool thing about the CEFR is that it is an international standard or international table meaning that if you go to another country, it's much easier for you to determine your level of proficiency in a language by using the CEFR than maybe just saying that, oh, I have intermediate English. I have advanced English. The CEFR is more precise. In my opinion and in my experience, it's a, a much more precise, much more accurate way to evaluate your level, okay? There are six main levels on the CEFR, A1, A2, B1, B2, C1, and C2. The first two levels, A1 and A2, 
they describe the typical basic user of a language. So if you are at A1 or A2 levels, you are still a beginner, okay? Now, the next two levels, B1 and B2, they describe the independent user of the language. These are the intermediate levels, intermediate and upper intermediate. A person who, who is at this level could be considered an independent user of the language already because you understand many things and you can already communicate successfully. You can already speak, all right? Then we get to the two final levels, C1 and C2. These levels describe a proficient user of the language. Now, at these levels, not only can you communicate well, but you can also communicate with a certain degree, with a higher degree of sophistication, wider vocabulary range, a greater domain of grammatical structures of the English language as a whole, and you can also understand pretty much everything, okay? So now that I have given you this brief, short explanation, what I want to do with you now here is I want to go over with you each level in some detail. So we're going to start with A1, and we're going to go all the way up to C2. I have here in front of me a table with a general description for each level. What a person who is at one of these levels is supposed to be able to do in English, okay? And we are going to learn straight from the source because this table here is from the Council of Europe website, all right? Uh, I am going to leave the link to this page in the show notes, if you are on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. And here on YouTube, I'm going to leave the link to this page in the video description. So if you are interested, you can go to this page and you can learn even more about the levels there and the CEFR as a whole. Okay? So let's start with the first level, level A1. I'm going to be reading the description here and pausing sometimes and making some comments based on my experience because I have been teaching English now for many, many years. So I'm going to try to add also my teaching experience to the description here, what I observe in terms of levels and in students. Okay. The first level, A1. Listen, can understand and use familiar everyday expressions and very basic phrases aimed at the satisfaction of needs of a concrete type. It's important that we pay attention here to certain key words. The difference between the levels is often in certain key words. For example, here we have familiar everyday expressions. That's a key phrase. And very basic phrases. That's A1 level. Let's continue. Can introduce him or herself and others and can ask and answer questions about personal details, such as where he or she lives, people he or she knows, and things he or she has. You see, so here we have more details. Can introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Thiago. Nice to meet you. What's your name? This is an example of language typically used by an A1 level learner, okay? You can talk about where you live. I live in Brazil. I live in England. I live in the US, okay? And also things you have. I have a house. I have a car. I have one son. I have two daughters, okay? Finally, we have here, can interact in a simple way, provided the other person talks slowly and clearly and is prepared to help. Did you get that? This is really important information here. A basic learner at A1 is able to interact in a simple way, but the other person needs to be willing to help you. Okay, so a person who is at an A1 level, 
normally would have difficulties traveling because usually when you travel, not everybody there, not every local is willing to really help you understand the language or really speak slowly with you because they're usually in a hurry. They are going on about their business, their routine. So when you interact with natives abroad, you might suffer a little bit if you are at this first level, okay? Simply because you need somebody who is willing to talk slowly and is prepared to help you with the communication with the language. That's A1 in summary. Let's move on to the A2 level now. Now, A2 is what I like to call a high beginner, a high beginner or even pre-intermediate learner, whatever you want to call it. Some teachers call it high beginner, other teachers call it pre-intermediate, uh, but both usually refer to A2 level. Let me read the description for you. Can understand sentences and frequently use expressions related to areas of most immediate relevance. For example, very basic personal and familiar information. Okay, very basic personal and familiar. And excuse me, let me read that again. Very basic personal and family information. Not familiar, but family. Okay, so. You can talk maybe about your profession, a little bit about your job, what you do. You can talk a little bit about your family, how many brothers and sisters you have, cousins, grandparents, that kind of vocabulary. Okay, let's continue here. We also have, can talk about shopping, local geography, and employment. Employment is work. Okay, can communicate in simple and routine tasks requiring a simple and direct exchange of information on familiar and routine matters. Pay attention to the key words here, simple. We are still dealing with simple interactions here, simple language, and also things that are more routine, more everyday routine, your family, your work, your school, your studies, okay? can describe in simple terms aspects of his or her background, immediate environment, and matters in areas of immediate need. This is another key piece of information here. Can describe in simple terms aspects of his or her background. Your background is what happened to you in the past, your past experiences. So we usually start studying or teaching learners the simple past tense, for example, or the past tenses in English at around A2 level. At around A2, you start learning about the regular verbs, the irregular verbs in English, the simple past tense, the past continuous. You know, I was going, I did, I went, I didn't play. These kinds of structures, all right? And that's pretty much it about A2. So A2, you are still communicating in a simple way, but you are able to talk about more things than an A1 learner is. You can even start talking about your past experiences already at this level, okay? Now, let's move on to the next level, which I believe that some of you out there will uh, recognize yourselves in, which is the B1 level. Now we are starting to talk about the intermediate levels. B1 is right in the middle, is a true intermediate learner, okay? Let's check out the description here. Can understand the main points of clear standard input on familiar matters, regularly encountered in work, school, leisure, etc. By the way, this word leisure means recreation. Leisure means recreation, fun. So I can ask you, what do you do in your free time? Or I can ask you, what do you do for leisure? For example, for recreation. Okay. Uh, some people pronounce it leisure. I guess it depends whether it's more of an American type of pronunciation or British type of pronunciation. I have heard some people saying leisure. I tend to pronounce it leisure, okay? So there you go, leisure, recreation. 
Let's continue here. Can deal with most situations likely to arise while traveling in an area where the language is spoken. Ah, uh, you see, very important piece of information here. A B1 level speaker can deal, can handle the most situations that probably happen when you are traveling. So if you go to an English speaking country as a B1 speaker, chances are you will be able to handle yourself there in terms of communication. You're not going to starve, you know, in other words. So you're going to be able to maybe order a meal, buy something at a shop, talk to people there, that kind of thing. You are already an independent user, remember? This is a nice word, by the way, situations likely to arise, okay? When something is likely to happen, there is a high chance or a high probability that that will happen. So situations that will probably happen or arise when you travel. That's what it means here, okay? Let's continue. Can produce simple connected text on topics which are familiar or of personal interest. This is interesting because now at B1, the description is also talking about text production. In other words, writing. In A1 and A2, there wasn't any mention about writing. It was mostly about communicating, about speaking. But here now at B1, there is also writing involved. So you are able to write simple texts, okay, on topics that are familiar or of personal interest to you. Finally, can describe experiences and events, dreams, hopes, and ambitions, and briefly give reasons and explanations for opinions and plans. You see, so now it's like we are slowly increasing our repertoire of possibilities. And that's exactly what, what this is about, guys. The higher you go up on the levels, the more things you should be able to do in the language and the more things you should be able to talk about, to listen, to read, to write about, okay? You are expanding your language repertoire, let's say. Look at this key phrase, can describe experiences and events, okay? Can describe dreams. You can talk about your dreams, hopes, and ambitions. So now we are also talking about the future. Remember in A2, you can already talk about background information, the past. Now in B1, not only the past, but you can also communicate using the future. So probably by now, by B1, you should be familiar already with will, will and won't for the future, how to use those. Go into or the famous gonna, as we say, the infamous gonna, right? I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to travel. Okay. And even present continuous with future meaning. It is possible to use present continuous with future meaning. For example, I am visiting my mom tomorrow. You see, I am visiting. That's present continuous, the, the structure. But the meaning here is future because of tomorrow. I am visiting my mom tomorrow, all right? By the way, if you are interested, I can make another episode all about the different future tenses. What is the difference, by the way, between will and won't, gonna, and present continuous for the future? Each one of these ways of communicating the future tense is possible in English, but they are slightly different. What is the difference? So let me know here in the comments, if you would be uh, interested in having a podcast all about that, how to talk about the future in English, okay? But you see, at B1 now, you can talk about the present, the past, the future. You can talk about personal things, work things. You can talk about your past experiences, your hopes, your plans for the future. So that's a B1 level speaker. Now, let's move on to B2, and B2 is a really nice level. I like to tell my students that depending on their goals, B2 is already an excellent level 
to achieve. I mean, a solid B2 level, because that's the upper intermediate level, or some people call it intermediate advanced, meaning that you are not just an intermediate speaker anymore. There are some advanced aspects to your English at this level already. So let's read the description here for B2. Can understand the main ideas of complex text on both concrete and abstract topics. Mm. You see here, A1 and A2 were all about simple communication, simple things, right? But look at the first line here for B2. Understand the main ideas of complex text on both concrete topics and abstract topics. So now at this higher level, at B2, we start dealing more and more with abstract topics or even abstract language. For example, if I ask you about your family, tell me about your family. How many brothers and sisters do you have? Are you married? Do you have any kids? This is, a, this is an example of a concrete topic. It's something concrete. But if I ask you uh, something along the lines of, if you found $1 million in a bag on the street, what would you do with it? This is not so concrete anymore. This is more abstract. You would have to imagine the situation, talk about what you would do and why. This is an example, okay? So abstract topics are usually topics that revolve more around ideas. Or if I ask you to talk about uh, the best marketing strategy for a company to adopt, you see, this is more abstract in terms of information. It's not just, I live here, I work there, I have this, this, and that. Okay? Including technical discussions in his or her field of specialization. So at this level, at B2 level, if you are a professional, you can already engage in technical discussions related to your field, to your area. That is really cool, isn't it? Can interact with a degree of fluency and spontaneity that makes regular interaction with native speakers quite possible without strain for either party. Party here, the people involved. So if I'm talking to you right now, let's say that there are two parties involved in this communication that is happening now, me and you. I am one of the parties, you are the other party, okay? That's what it means here, party. Now, did you, did you, did you guys hear this? You can interact well with native speakers and without strain for either party. Strain. When you strain to do something, you struggle to do it. You do it with a lot of difficulty. It's hard. It's not so smooth. It's not so easy or seamless. Okay? Meaning that what a B2 speaker should be able to interact, to talk to a native speaker of English without much strain, meaning that you are able to easily understand what the native speaker is telling you, and the native speaker is also able to understand you because you have clear pronunciation. You might have an accent, which is normal. We all have accents. If we, we uh, if we're not native speakers of English, we're going to speak with some accent. That's okay. But it means that your pronunciation is clear enough that the native speaker doesn't have to strain or make a huge amount of effort to understand you. Okay? Let's continue here. Can produce clear, detailed text on a wide range of subjects and explain a viewpoint on a topical issues given the advantages and disadvantages of various options. So again, there is writing involved here. So a true B2 level learner should be able to also produce texts. You see, should be able to write emails, reports, letters, all right? And these texts are clear, detailed, and on a wide range of subjects. So at this level, you should be able to write 
an essay, for example, about various topics because you have the vocabulary, the knowledge of the grammar already in place to be able to do that. And you should also be able to explain a viewpoint. A, view, a viewpoint is an opinion, okay? A viewpoint is how you view something on a topical issue. Something topical is something that is relevant nowadays. Maybe you turn on the TV and you pay attention to the topics that the media or the news is talking about in the moment. These topics are topical because they are relevant to the present moment. It's what everybody's talking about these days, okay? And of course, you are able to give the advantages and disadvantages of various options, okay? Again, it, it connects to that idea of the abstract topics, right? You are able to deal with abstract topics more effectively here at B2 level. You can talk about the advantages of something, the disadvantages of something. Just to give an example, talk about the advantages and disadvantages of working remotely or working from home. So you will be able to generate a lot of ideas and opinions about this. Advantages, upsides, and disadvantages, downsides. Okay? So guys, um, B2 is already a very good level for most people, I would say. If your goal is to work in English, to maybe have a job at a multinational company and be in an English-speaking environment, professionally speaking, you can do that. If you want to travel both for work and for personal leisure, you can do that, no problem at all. You can interact well with people abroad. You can make new friends in English, okay? So for most everyday situations, personal and work-wise, I would say that B2 is already an excellent level to get to, to achieve. Now, of course, you might not want to stop there. You might want to really develop yourself even more in English and get to the higher levels, the two higher levels, the proficient levels, C1 and C2. I mean, I want to encourage you to get to advanced levels of English, to get to a C1 level or even to a C2 level. As I told you now, you can accomplish, you can achieve many things at B2, that's great. And I, and I understand that for many people, that's already enough. But if you are following me here, you know, if you like my work, if you like the way I speak English, I believe that you don't want to stop at B2. You want to get to a C1 or even C2 level, right? And that's why you are following this channel, because this channel is all about that. It's about helping people who are at B1 and B2 levels get to C1 or even C2 levels. Okay? So, yes, I want to encourage you to go all the way. Go to C1. Go to C2. All right? Having said that, let's talk a little bit now about the advanced levels, starting with C1. Listen. Can understand a wide range of demanding longer texts and recognize implicit meaning. Mm. First of all here, a C1 level speaker is able to understand a wide range, meaning a huge variety, a wide variety of harder, more difficult texts. So think about maybe academic articles that you have to read when you are at university. These are more demanding. They are longer texts, harder to follow and to understand. Okay? But a C1 level speaker is able to read those and understand them. I really like this part here. Able to recognize implicit meaning. In other words, meaning that maybe is written between the lines, as we say, right? Because we have implicit and explicit meaning. Something explicit is something obvious that is there. It, it doesn't demand much effort for you to understand it. But implicit meaning is something a little bit more between the lines, not so obvious. So you need a higher level of understanding to be able to draw meaning from a longer, more, demand, more demanding, excuse me, type of text. Let's continue here. 
can express him or herself fluently and spontaneously without much obvious searching for expressions. So you are fluent at this level. You can express yourself, you can communicate fluently without much obvious searching for expressions, meaning that you don't stop so much to think about the words you're going to say. Or if you stop, it's not a super long pause. It's not so obvious that you are not talking because you are trying to remember the next word you're going to say next. Okay? Good. Let's continue here. Can use the language flexibly and effectively for social, academic, and professional purposes. You see, again, the repertoire opening and widening even more, right? An advanced level speaker can use the language flexibly, you see, with flexibility, and effectively, not only in social situations and work situations, like a B2 level speaker can, but also academic situations, you see? So that's why I usually tell my students that if your goal is to immigrate to another country and work there, many times a B2 level should suffice, should be okay, enough. But if you plan to study abroad, if you want to maybe go to college abroad, if you want to maybe um, take some sort of course that is more academic, at least a C1 level would be the best option. Okay? Let's continue here. Now about the text again, about the writing, right? Can produce clear, well-structured, detailed text on complex subjects, showing controlled use of organizational patterns, connectors, and cohesive devices. So at this level, you should be able to write a script, an email, a report, an essay that is detailed, well-structured, and even on complex subjects, okay? And I really like this part, showing controlled use of organizational patterns. So you know how to structure the paragraphs in your text. You know what an introduction is, conclusion is, what a topic sentence is, and what supporting details are for paragraphs, okay? And you also have a controlled use of connectors and cohesive devices. These are the, the linking words, the conjunctions. Maybe when you are at a lower level, maybe B1 or even B2, you might write or even speak with words like but, because, so, and. These are connectors too, but they are much basic, much more basic, right? Now at this level here, if you are writing an essay, you're going to use connectors such as, such as, as I just said, but in addition, moreover, on one hand, on the other hand, however, nevertheless, nonetheless, due to, owing to, for example, for instance, in conclusion, in summary, to sum up, you see, all these are more advanced cohesive devices, connectors that are useful not only for a more formal type of text, like an essay, but also if you're giving a presentation. Maybe you are giving a, a formal presentation at work, you are meeting with very important people at work, meeting with directors, and you want to sound more professional, more formal. These words are great, depending on the situation. If the situation requires something more formal, okay? So, the main difference between B2 and C1, I would say, is that at C1, there is a wider range of possibilities, a wider range of vocabulary you know, understand, and use. You know a wider range of grammatical structures, and you can use them also very well. And you are able to deal with pretty much anything that is more complex or hard or demanding in terms of uh, texts, podcasts, videos, you understand all of those and you communicate effectively and fluently, okay? Now, let's move on to the last level, 
which is the C2 level. The C2 level is actually very similar to a C1 level. The difference is that now at this stage, uh, it's more about the minor details, the finer nuances of language than anything else. I like to, to, to say that the higher you go on the levels, the more difficult it gets for you to start seeing real progress. Because when you are a complete beginner, A1, and usually from A1 to B1, I would say, from A1 to B1, usually your progress is really quick, really fast. Maybe in a matter of a few months or maybe even a year, you already see tremendous progress. You go, oh man, I mean, six months ago, one year ago, I didn't speak anything. I was a complete beginner. Now I'm watching movies in English. I'm listening to Chago's podcast now. No problem at all. I can talk to people as well. Sometimes I forget some words and stuff, but I can communicate. I can handle myself if I travel. And that progress from A1 to B1, I think it's really fast. It tends to uh, happen quickly. Now, something happens at around B1 plus going B2, that's when the plateau starts to settle or settle in. So for some people, it depends. For some people, uh, I like to say actually that maybe there are two plateaus. The first plateau is between B1 and B2. Going from B1 to B2 can already be a plateau. Uh, it's not so quick to happen and it demands more of you you have to do more stuff, study more to see maybe some improvement. But then the second type of plateau is from B2 to C1. Okay? Because uh, if you are at a B2 level, you are comfortable already with the language. You use it every day. You know, you can speak. And even though you can speak, you can communicate, you still feel deep inside that something is missing or that you could be doing more, but you don't know exactly what. That's the typical plateau that a B2 to C1 learner faces, okay? Now, once you are at a C1 level, if you are a solid C1 learner, I think going to C2 is not that difficult. I mean, yes, yeah, it's going to require some effort on your part, but if you are a true C1, a solid C1, it shouldn't take you a long time to get to C2, okay? But let's read here the definition for C2. Can understand with ease. Listen to this keyword, with ease. When you do something with ease, you do it easily, okay? So, can understand with ease virtually everything heard or read. Virtually meaning almost. In other words, if you are at a C2 level, you can understand pretty much everything that you hear or that you read. No matter what you read, no matter what you hear, what you listen to, what you watch, you're going to understand with ease, easily. So at this stage, your listening skills are really, really sharp. Okay? Let's continue here can summarize information from different spoken and written sources, reconstructing arguments and accounts in a coherent presentation. You see, so now you, you are able to summarize information. That's really cool, yeah? Imagine you read a, a long academic text and with your C2 level of proficiency, you are able to synthesize that content and maybe summarize it in a logical manner. They also call it coherent presentation, something that makes sense. About the speaking, can express him or herself spontaneously, very fluently, and precisely. Another key word for C2. Communicate spontaneously, yes. Fluently, yes. But not just fluently, also precisely. 
That is also one of the main differences between a more advanced level and a more intermediate level, guys, because a B2 speaker is already fluent in many ways. That person could be considered a fluent English speaker. But many times a B2 speaker won't be as precise, as accurate as a C1 or C2 speaker of English. When I talk about precision and accuracy, I talk about mistakes, the number of mistakes to make. The main, another main difference between B2, C1, and C2 is that the higher you go in terms of level, naturally, the fewer mistakes you would make when speaking and writing. I'm not saying that a C1 or C2 level speaker never, make mis never makes mistakes. I mean, I make mistakes all the time. Even though I am at level C2, I still make mistakes uh, from time to time when I speak or when I write something. But the frequency of mistakes, that's the key difference here. So let's say that maybe at B2 level, for every paragraph that you write, maybe there are 10 mistakes there. But if you take a C1 or C2 level speaker, maybe there will be one mistake or maybe zero mistakes. You see, so the frequency tends to decrease the higher you go, okay? Finally, differentiating finer shades of meaning even in more complex situations. So now you are able to deal even more with nuanced, nuanced, excuse me, nuanced information, abstract information, and you are able to get the finer shades of meaning. For example, uh, at, a, at, at C2 level, you are able to fully understand jokes. For example, if you're watching a stand-up comedian on Netflix, for example, speaking really fast and making a lot of jokes and using a lot of sarcasm, that kind of language, that kind of thing, you should be able to understand uh, that type of humor, that type of joke. It's the finer shades of meaning. Okay, so guys, that's it. This is a brief overview of the CEFR levels. Keep in mind that these are the general descriptions for each level. There is much more to it than that, okay? Especially if you start talking about the individual skills, speaking, listening, reading, writing, and use of English. But generally speaking, that's what the levels mean. And now, I would like to encourage you to reflect and to think about your current level. Which level do you think you are at right now? And I think most importantly, which level would you like to get to? Is it B2, C1, C2? And why do you want to reach that level? What, what is reaching that level going to bring you? when I bring to your life, okay? So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, the cool thing is that there is also a free test that Cambridge has on their website. And it's a really simple test. Uh, it's only 25 questions, multiple choice questions. I'm gonna leave the link to that test in the show notes and also in the description of the video here. In case you're interested in taking that test, it should take you about maybe 20 minutes tops. And that test is going to give you an idea already if you should be preparing for a B1 or B2 or C1 or C2 level. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's not a complete test because it's only multiple choice questions. There isn't an evaluation of your listening skills, writing skills, or even speaking skills. But generally speaking, you can already have an idea there of maybe where you are and what you should study next. Okay. Guys, thank you so much for listening to this episode today. Again, the best way to support this show is by leaving a five-star review here on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. And if you're on YouTube, subscribe, share the episode with friends and family, and keep following the videos. All right. I'm signing off. Thank you so much. And I hope to see you again very soon in the next episode. Take care.